Hello and welcome to the Critic Uculus. I'm the Monk, and today we are in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Now, this is a tips video. This is my top tips, and this is a beginner's guide tip. So, if you've never played this game before, these are the things that I wish I knew before I started playing. And if you have a little bit more experience in Bannerlord, then hopefully this helps, but probably not. This is really for, you know, just starting out this game and top things. To be mindful of and if this is the kind of content you want to see don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel help us reach a new audience when you very first start this game you probably have almost nothing however did you know that you can switch between your normal clothes and your civilian clothes your civilian clothes are the clothes that you use when you walk about the towns and you pretty much do not need them and um, they provide very little um defense whatsoever and you can sell them to earn yourself a nice little chunk of change at the beginning of the game another thing i saw someone comment is they couldn't figure out how to actually get into your infantry look at your party and stuff like that they thought the only way you could do it is by being at a town obviously when you go to a town you get a mouse icon you're able to scroll down and then you have the access to the, your bottom bar however on console all you have to do is hit back so you just have to hit b on xbox or circle on playstation and hey presto you then have a mouse icon that you can move around the screen and interact with the various buttons like i said some people have commented they didn't know how to do this so hopefully this helps them Tip number three is that you've probably seen these explanation marks around your map as you played, but you might not know what they mean. Well, the blue explanation mark means that there is a mission there, a quest that you can um, do to earn some money, to earn some elation with that town or that, you know, that NPC. And a tip 3.5, I guess, is that you don't actually have to go walk about in the town to find that person. You can simply just click on their face and then either visit them wherever they are or just straight up talk to them and accept the quest if that's something you want to do. Tip number four is going to be not to avoid the gold explanation marks. Jump in and talk to those characters as soon as possible. You'll see a lot of them riding around on the map and some of them are going to be in keeps. You need to bribe your way through. This relates to the main story and the main quest of the game. Tip number five is did you know that you can get companions in this game? Well, all you have to do to find out where they all are is hit the select button or the back button depending on which platform you are go down to wanderer and hey presto you now have a list of every single companion recruitable companion that you can get in the game and you can also find out where they were last seen it can be so useful to have these companions in the game as early as possible. You can also use that kind of like, you know, encyclopedia to look up any character in the game, especially if you're looking for someone to marry. Within the filter system, you can also filter it so you can find all the unmarried people in the game and then track them down individually. Tip number six is food. Pay attention to food. At the beginning of the game, you should really get you know as many troops as possible to stop those looters and those sea raiders absolutely destroying you but if you're going to have 20 troops around with you you are going to need to be able to feed them so having food like grain or fish on you will help them stay alive also the more varied the food the happier they are when it comes to morale as well Tip number seven is use the arena at the beginning of the game. Using the arena is a great way to level up your skills. It can be really hard in this game because basically you start as a character that has no proficiency in any weapon. But if you jump into the arena, you can play with a variety of different weapons, earning up skill points in order to rank up your abilities. It's also a good way to earn a little bit of money. To earn more money, however, I would recommend joining the tournaments. You can earn a lot of money in the tournaments by placing bets and also go for prizes. The prizes are often gear related and it is better gear than you will probably already have, at least in the early stages. 
Tip number eight is, did you know that you can actually lock onto a target, simply click down the right analog stick and you will be able to lock down onto a target, meaning the camera will follow them, making combat a little bit easier. Tip number nine is a much requested um, answer. A lot of you have commented asking, how do you individually manage your types of troops? Well, as you you know hold down the button to give a command, you can actually use the toggle feature with your directional pad to highlight the troop type that you actually want to order individually. So as you can see, I've just sent forward my infantry my archers are still stood by. I've highlighted them now and my cavalry is off to the left of me. They're not highlighted. They will not do anything with this order. It's really simple, but obviously you need to know how to do it in order to actually you know, achieve this. So I understand fully why so many people have been a little bit confused about how to do this. You simply use your directional pad um, to highlight the type of troops that you actually want to use. Now we get the cavalry to follow me and hey presto. Tip number 10 is perhaps an obvious one to some, but smithing is so useful for earning money. It's a really easy skill that you can level up as well. I would experiment with it, you know, experiment with smithing because the type of weapons, especially the two-handed weapons that you can actually make, two-handed swords being the best, you know, money maker is, you know, really easy to do and you can make yourself some serious dough um, by making these weapons. As you can see, I've just created a sword. I'm going to name it Monk so you can tell that this was the sword that I've created. And afterwards, if we pop into the town and go down to trade, we can see that there it is, Monk. I'm making myself just under 700 dinars, which is pretty bloody good. And as you level up and as you get more proficient, the quality of weapon that you make is going to get better and so is that money. Tip number 11 has helped me out so much in the tournaments, guys. That is Shield Bash. To Shield Bash, simply use your shield to defend by holding the left trigger and then tap X or I believe it's square on the PlayStation and you will then perform a Shield Bash. It will stun the target, enabling you then to do a full swing to kill them. And you can actually level this skill up and stun them for a little bit more if you look into your one-handed perk tree. And they are my top tips, guys. I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully you guys have learned something. If, if this has been useful to you, if you have learned something, let me know down in the comments which was your favorite tip that you've learned today. And again, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We also have an active Discord down below in the description. You'll find a link. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I have been a monk. We've been a critically curious, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs>